Hello and welcome back to the uh, 055 notes. This is section 5.4 and this is about factoring trinomials. So we're going to talk about uh, the different ways that we can factor trinomials. And what I want to make you guys remember here is that from section 5.4, remember, so remember, okay, that factoring is the opposite of the distributive property. Distributive property. Okay, and guys, I really apologize. They did an update on this app, and it doesn't allow me to write that well, so they're in the process of fixing it, but we just got to get, get some of these videos out. So, so remember that factoring is the opposite of the distributive property. So let's think about this. Um, you know, let's just review, like, if I took 3 times x plus 2, okay, I would distribute the 3, okay, and that would end up giving me uh, 3 times x plus 3 times 2, which is going to be 6, okay? So when I do that, okay, to factor, I do the opposite, okay? Factor, that means that I'm going to do, uh, you know, given something like this, then I'm going to factor out a 3, and I'm left with x plus 2. Okay, and we did that in the last section, all right? But what I want to talk about is when we multiply binomials together, okay? So let's do this, and we don't need the word factor here, okay? Um, let's think about this. Let's say that I take x plus 2 times x plus 1, okay? Now, what I'm really doing here is I'm doing the distributive property. I'm taking the value of x, and I'm multiplying it by x plus 1, okay? So what this is here is I'm going to take x times x plus 1, okay? And then I'm going to take 2 times x plus 1, okay? And we would add all this together. So add these together, all right, and then I'm going to do 2 times x plus 1. Okay, now when I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and distribute. So x times x is going to give me uh, x squared, and then x times 1 gives me positive x. Okay, and then over here, I would do 2 times x, so it's going to give me plus 2x, and then 2 times 1 is going to give me plus 2. Okay, so when I add these together, I can combine like terms here, x and 2x, and so I'm going to get x squared plus 3x plus 2. Okay, and that's that. Okay, now this is when we distribute. Okay, so what I was doing here was I was multiplying these things, okay, and I was using the distributive property. Okay, and that's how I did that. Okay, so you're always doing that. Now, there are some little things that we could do here, all right? Um, let's say that I wanted to do the thing that's called FOIL, okay? So if I had x plus 2, and then x plus 1, okay, I would do this thing called FOIL. And FOIL, okay, F-O-I, and then L, this means the first numbers, okay, this is outside, 
This is inside, and this is last, okay? And so when I do that, all right, when I multiply the first numbers together, okay, I'm going to do x times x, okay? So this is going to give me x times x, which is going to give me x squared, okay? Plus the outside numbers, so x times 1, so plus x, all right? The inside, which is 2 times x, so plus 2x, all right, and then 2 times 1, which is just going to give me plus 2. Now, notice we get the same thing as we did up here, all right, and this is going to end up giving me x squared, all right, plus 3x, and then plus 2, all right? So we get the same thing. Okay, now we also have this thing called the box method, okay? So we have the box method. And so if I were to do still x plus 2 times x plus 1, all right, then what I would do is this. I would draw a box, okay? And I could do x plus 1. Okay, and then x plus 2 over here. And so what I do is that I would then take x times x to give me x squared here. Okay, so this is going to give me x squared. I would then do x times 1, which gives me x. Okay, and then here I'm going to do uh, 2 times x, which gives me 2x here. All right, so I've got 2 x. All right, and then on the last one, I'm going to do 2 times 1, which gives me a total of 2, okay? Now, I need to combine my like terms here, all right, but then my answer, once I add all those together, I've got x squared, okay, plus 2x plus x gives me 3x, and then plus 2. Okay, so what I did here was I showed you guys how we multiply two binomials together, okay? How I take these two things, I can either use a distributive property, or I could use the FOIL method, or I could use the box method. Now, this is going one way. What I'm going to then show you guys is going backwards, is starting with this and going backwards to get this. All right, so remember how, you know, what we do, you know, if we multiply these together, all right, um, if I take x plus 2, x plus 2 times x plus 1, okay, this is going to be equivalent to me saying that this is x squared plus 3x plus 2, okay? Now, when I go this way, all right, this means I'm multiplying. I'm using the distributive property, okay? Now, what we're going to do in this section is we're going to go backwards, okay? And we're going to factor, all right? And that's the idea here. But I wanted you to see the different methods of me multiplying these out, because uh, we haven't really covered that yet. Um, and so, um, you know, that's what, we're, that's what we're doing, okay? So I primarily will use kind of the opposite of the FOIL method, but I also like to use the box method, okay, when I'm factoring. All right, so let's go through a bunch of examples. We've got three, three examples on this page, and then what we're going to do is... Um, is, is we're going to uh, do the last page, and then we'll be done. Okay, so let's jump in here on this first one. So I want to factor this, uh, the following, completely. So the first thing I want to do, I want to do the box method, okay? So the box method. Okay? And so the box method, what I want to do is this. I'm going to draw my box 
the way that um, I had before, okay, and I'm going to take my first term, which was x squared, and I'm going to put that number, that, that term, here. And then I'm going to take my last term, my constant, which is my 12, and I'm going to put that in here, okay? Now, what I want to do is I want to think of what two things multiplied together are going to give me x squared, okay? And those numbers are going to go uh, up here, and so I'm going to put an x here, okay? And then I'm going to put an x here, all right? And then I want to think of two numbers that multiply to 12, okay? And what I also want them to do is to add to 7, okay? So the numbers that multiply to 12 and add to 7 are going to be 3 and 4, okay? So I'm going to do a plus 3 here. doesn't matter where you put these. And I'm going to do a plus 4 here, okay? And when I do that, when I take 4 times x, that's going to give me 4x, okay? When I take 3 times x, that's going to give me a positive 3x, Okay, so then what I want to do is I want to combine these, and here's the thing, um, you know, I, what I have done, I just want to verify that when I take 3x and 4x together and I add them, I get 7x, which is uh, what I've got here, so this is factored correctly, okay? So when I factor this, okay, I write my answer as the product of x plus 3 times x plus 4. Okay, and that's my answer. Okay, now I could check this by multiplying this out either by the box method or by foiling it or using the distributive property, and that would give me this back up here. Okay, now, okay, there's another way. Okay, there's another method. All right, when my leading coefficient is 1, so let me rewrite this. Uh, let me rewrite this as x squared plus 7x and then plus 12, all right, what I have is when my leading coefficient is 1, okay, and that's that number here, when this is 1, is 1, then I ask myself the question, what two numbers multiply to 12, okay, but add to 7, okay? And when I ask that question, then I get the numbers, well, that's going to be 3 and 4, okay? And so then when I can ask that question, I can automatically just factor this to x plus 3 times x plus 4, okay? And that would be factored, all right? So some of these are pretty easy to do. Um, if the leading coefficient is 1, but I kind of like the box method because the box method will work even when the coefficient isn't 1, and we'll kind of look at that here in a minute, okay? All right, let's look at, look at part B, okay? Part B says this. Um, okay, so I'm just going to continue to use the box method, so I'm going to draw my box, okay? I'm going to put my first term, which is y squared, into this box, so I've got y squared. I'm going to put my last term, which is 27, into this box, Okay, but now I got to think about something. All right. Uh, the well, the first thing, let's do this. Okay, what two numbers multiply to y squared? That's just going to give me y and y. Okay, so if I multiply those together, I'm going to get y squared. The question is, I need to figure out what two numbers multiply to 27, but would also add to negative 12. So what I need to think about here is, you know, both of these numbers need to be negative because two negative numbers multiplied together is going to give me a positive number, positive 27, but they need to add to negative 12. So let's do this. Let's try negative 3 
and negative 9. Okay? If I take negative 3 times y, this is going to give me negative 3y. If I take negative 9 times y, that's going to give me minus 9y. Okay? So now I want to combine these together. All right? So negative 9y minus 3y that's going to give me negative 12y. And because that matches my middle term here, we're good. And that's what I'm looking for. So then what I do is I look here and here, and these are my factors. So then my answer, okay, my answer is going to be y minus 3 times y minus set y minus 9, okay? And that's it. It's factored, and that's all we're doing is rewriting it. Okay, let's take a look at C. Now, C is kind of is a little bit weird. I want to rewrite this. I want to rewrite this as x squared minus 9x minus 22. And the reason is is that this is in standard form. When my value, my initial uh, problem here should just be an x squared. Okay, my middle term is an x. My last term is a number. Okay, so same thing. I'm going to do the box method. So I'm going to draw a little box here. All right. And I'm going to put in my first term, which is x squared, into this box here. Okay, I'm going to put negative 22 down here. Okay, so now the two numbers that multiply to x squared is just going to give me x and x, all right? And so then what I have to think about is what two numbers are going to multiply to negative 22 but add to negative 9. And sometimes this will take a little bit of trial and error, okay? But the goal is, is that whatever numbers go in here and here, when you combine them, should add to negative 9. So we've got to kind of keep that, keep that in mind. So let's do this. Let's think of positive 11. I'm sorry, negative 11. So I'm going to do negative 11 up here. And then I'm going to do positive 2. Okay? And what I'm thinking about is just these two numbers will multiply to give me negative 22. All right? So if I do 2x, 2 times x, it's going to give me 2x. So in this box, it's going to go a 2x. Um, if I do negative 11 times x, it's going to give me minus 11x. Okay? Now, if I combine these two and add them together, this is going to give me negative 9x. And that's my middle term here. And so we're good. And, when, and I know that this is factored. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is write out my factors, which are located here and here. And this is going to give me x minus 11 times x plus 2. And this is my answer, and that's factored. Okay, so kind of a lot of information. I know um, I went over some stuff that we'll need to know, um, you know, that, that kind of helped us develop this idea of what it means to factor, okay? And it means the opposite of the distributive property. Okay, now over here, what you'll find out is you'll, these are some steps to help you um, factor things. And so what I'll do is when these come up, I'll address them, but these are the definitions of difference of squares and difference of cubes, okay? And then we'll, uh, we'll talk more about those uh, on the next page. Okay, so what I want to do now is go over these last six problems. Um, and what I want you to see here um, in Part D is that our leading coefficient is not 1. It's 6, okay? And so this is where the box method really helps um, what you're doing. Okay, so what I want to do is draw in my box, okay, and this is where I might have to do this like more than one time because um, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm coming in fresh. I don't know how to do, I don't know what the answer is to these problems, but I know I can, what I can do to check, okay. So the first term is 6t squared. That is going to go in this box here, 6t squared. And then my last term is negative 15, and that's going to go over here. Now, this is a little bit trickier on what to choose what goes up here and what and over here. 
because now I have to say, okay, well, what two things are going to multiply together to give me 6t squared, okay? And so 6t squared, you know, what I want to think about is what two numbers are going to multiply to 6, all right? Let's try 2 and 3, but i got to put in the 2t and then a 3t. Now, it doesn't matter which one goes where, okay? But now I want to think about, okay, what are two numbers that multiply to give me negative 15? Now, remember... Whatever I put here and here, I have to multiply to 2t and 3t to get these boxes, okay? Whatever I multiply together has to add to positive t, all right? So I'm going to kind of keep that in the back of my mind. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do positive 3, okay? And I'm going to do negative 5. All right, so as a result, let's just try that. Now, I know that these two numbers are going to multiply to negative 15. Okay, so we're kind of guessing and checking at this point. Okay, so I'm going to do 3 times 3t, and that's going to give me a positive 9t, okay? And then I'm going to take negative 5 times 2t, which gives me negative 10t, okay? Now, when I add these together, what am I getting? I'm getting a negative t out of this, which does not match, okay? This is not, we want to get positive t, so this is no, okay? This doesn't work. So let's try this again, okay? Now, we're pretty close, okay? And if you don't see what we need to do, what we need to do is we just need to change the signs here to this be a positive and this be a negative, all right? So let me do that real quick. Let me redraw this, all right, this box, and this is going to give me 6 t squared, negative 15. All right, this value here is going to give me 2t. This is going to give me 3t. This is going to give me a negative 3 over here. Let's change up these signs, okay? And so now what I want to do is I want to do negative 3 times 3t, which gives me negative 9t, okay? And then if I do... 5 times 2t, that's going to give me positive 10t. Okay, now when I multiply these, to, or add these together here, this gives me t, which is what we're looking for here. So this is the 1. This is the factor. All right, so now I write my answer as 2t minus 3 times 3t plus... Five. Okay, and that's my answer. These are historically very difficult to factor. However, I believe that the box method is really the way that you should go on this. Okay, all right. Let's do this up here. Okay. <coughs> okay, the first thing I want to do on this problem is notice that my leading coefficient is negative. Okay. What I want to do first is I want to factor out a negative 1. And when I factor out a negative 1, we're left with 2y squared plus 7y and then minus a 9. Okay? And the reason why I want to do that is it's just going to save me time and energy um, when I'm doing this. All right? So let's do the box method. All right, let me draw a box here. Okay, and I'm going to put my first term in there, which is 2y squared. So 2y squared. I'm going to put my last term in there, which is negative 9. So negative 9. Okay, so now I want to say, okay, what two numbers multiplied together are going to give me 2y squared? Okay, one of them is going to be a simple y. The other one is going to be 2y. Okay, now what other numbers are going to multiply to give me negative 9. Okay, now remember, they also need to eventually, these boxes need to add to positive 7y. All right, so let's just put in some numbers. Um, let's do um, positive 3 here, and let's do negative 3. Okay, and so positive 3 times 2y is going to give me 6y. All right, uh, negative 3 times y is going to give me negative 3y. Okay, these two added together 
give me positive 3y. Okay, so that doesn't work. No, it does not match uh, 7y. Okay, so let's try another one. All right. Let's put this in here. I've got a 2y, um, and I've got negative 9. This is going to give me y, 2y. Okay, if I put this as a negative 3 and this as a positive 3, okay, then, oh, I know what to do, okay, uh, then that's going to give me um, 3y and negative 6y, okay? If I add these together, this gives me negative 3y. Again, no, this does not work, okay? So let's think of something else, all right? Let's think of, you know, let me come in here and draw another box. Okay, let me do 2y, negative 9, uh, let me do y up here. Let me do 2y here. Let me do this as a negative 1, and let's do this as a positive 9 over here. Okay, once you guys do this enough times, you start to see a pattern, and you'll be able to kind of look at it and know what it factors to. Okay, so if I do 2y times negative 1, that's going to give me negative 2y. Okay, if I do... 9 times y, that's going to give me a positive 9y, all right? If I add these together, then this is going to give me a positive 7y, and that's what we're looking for, okay? So once I get that, okay, because remember I was looking for that value here, okay, then my answer, okay, are just my factors here, 2y plus 9 and y minus 1, all right? So up here, my answer is y minus 1 times 2y plus 9. And that's my answer. That's what we're looking for, okay? All right, let's take a look at this one here. Okay, now on this one, all right, my leading coefficient, oh, whoops, we missed something. Remember how we factored out a negative 1 here? Okay, we got to put that in up here. So times a negative 1, okay, would go there. All right, so make sure you put that in. Okay, here on this one, um, what I notice is that I've got some big numbers. I've got 18, 24, and negative 10, okay? Um, my leading coefficient is positive. That's fine. Um, but I notice that all of these numbers are even numbers. I could factor out a 2 out of this, and I could work with smaller numbers. So I've got 9t squared plus 12t minus 5, okay? And what I can do, when I, when I make these numbers smaller, it's easier for me to factor, all right? So here's my first term, 9t squared, and here's my last term, negative 5, all right? So let's go to our box method. Let me draw this out. Okay, my first term is 9t squared. My last term is negative Five. Okay, now remember what we're looking for is that these two boxes, once we find numbers, will add to 12t, okay? So let's do this. Let's do um, 3t here. So two things that multiply to 9t squared, 3t and 3t, okay? And so then, once I have that, um, two numbers that multiply to negative 5. So let's do this. I'm going to do negative 1 and a positive 5, all right? And so if I do negative 1, this is going to give me negative 1 times 3t, which is going to give me negative 3t, okay? If I do 5 times 3t, that's going to give me positive 15t. There we go. That's it. Okay, so positive 15t. All right, if I combine these and add them together, then that's going to end up giving me positive 12t, which is what we're looking for, all right, which is here. Okay, so my answer, now don't forget the 2. We've got to keep that because we factored that out. But we're going to be left with 3t minus 1 times 3t plus 5. Okay, and that's my answer. All right, so I'm a huge believer in the box method. I believe it works. 
better than other methods. All right, over here, all right, let's do this. Okay, let's do the box method here. Uh, let me draw a box, leading coefficient of 1. So this is going to give me x squared in this box, negative 7 in this box. All right, and so now um, I've got x and x and two numbers that are going to multiply to negative 7. So 7 is a prime number, so it's either, let's just try negative 1 and let's try positive 7. Okay, if I take 7 times x, it's going to give me 7x. Okay, and then uh, let's do negative 1 times x, so this is negative x. Now, when I combine these two numbers, this gives me positive 6x, okay, which doesn't match 3x. So this is no, this doesn't work. Okay, the only other option that we can try is this. All right, let's make another box. This is going to give me x squared and then negative 7 here. Uh, I'm going to put an x here and an x here. And so I've got a positive 1. All right, so if I put a positive 1 here and then a negative 7 here, all right, negative uh, 1 times x is just positive x, okay? Negative 7 times x is negative 7x, all right? Now, if I combine these, we're going to get negative 6x, which doesn't match with 3, no. Now, here's the issue. There's no two other numbers that are going to multiply to negative 7. There's only those two options. So because neither of those options worked, all right, there's no other numbers we could put in there, this is not factorable. And that's all we write, is that not factorable. Okay? All right, let's take a look at part H. Okay, H I want to rewrite real quick. H then, or let's do this as y squared minus 12y and then plus 36. Okay, so here's my first term. Here's my last term. Let's draw our box. Let's put our first term in there, <coughs> which is going to give me y squared. Okay, put my last term in there, which is positive 36, okay? Now, two numbers that multiply to y squared is just going to give us y and y. Now, two numbers that multiply to 36 but add to negative 12, you need to think about this. If they're going to add to a negative number and multiply to a positive number, then they both need to be negative, all right? So over here, I'm going to put a minus 6 and a minus 6. Okay, so now I've got y times negative 6, which is negative 6y, and then negative 6 times y is negative 6y. Add these two together, and we're going to get negative 12y. Okay, so this works. So this is how this factors, and when I write my answer, I'm going to write y minus 6 times itself, which is y minus 6, and because I'm taking y minus 6 times itself, I can write this as y minus 6 quantity squared, okay? So either one of these answers would work, okay? All right, let's take a look at the very, very last one, and then we'll be done. Okay, this one's a little weird because it has two variables in it. It's got x and it's got y, okay? So my first term here is x squared. My last term is 100y squared. So again, this is a lot easier if you use the box method. All right, so I'll make my box, okay, put my first term x squared in here, and my last term 100y squared, okay? Now, two numbers that multiply to x squared, that's pretty easy. That's just going to be x and then x. Now, I look at my last term. Two numbers that are going to multiply to 100 and y squared is going to be 10y and 10y, all right? But they have to add to negative 20. So let's make these negative 10y and negative 10y, okay? If I do negative 10y times x, that's going to give me negative 
x, y. Same thing over here, negative 10, x, and y. If I combine these two, that's going to give me negative 20, x, y. And we're good. That's what we're looking for. So um, the way I would factor this would be x minus 10, y times x minus 10, y. Because I'm multiplying the same thing by itself, I'm getting x minus 10 y quantity squared, okay, because there's two of them. All right, so that's your answer. All right, so that's it. That's all I got for this. So I recommend you to use the box method. It's going to be a lot easier than doing any other method. So get us started on your homework and holler if you've got any questions. Thanks a lot. Bye.